Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 17th, 2022 pre-council meeting for the city of Joliet. Mayor Robert Odekirk presiding. We'll begin with roll call. Mayor Odekirk. Here. Councilman Clement. Here. Councilwoman Gavin. Here. Councilman Guerrero. Here. Councilman Hug. Here. Councilman Morris. Here. Councilman Mudrin. Here. Councilwoman Coleman. Here. Councilwoman Reardon. Here. First on the agenda is citizens to be heard on agenda items. Is there anyone present that would like to speak on an agenda item this evening? Seeing none, we'll have the city manager discuss tomorrow night's items. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, agenda item 508.22, regular payroll for May 20th to June 2nd, 2022, $7,413,000. $416.86. Uh, this is unusually high because it includes the back pay for uh, the union contract 440. So that's why this one is uh, significantly higher than what you'll see last one. So uh, the following ones. Uh, agenda item 509-22, regular payroll for June 3rd to June 16th, 2022, $3,830,872.64. Agenda item 510-22, regular payroll for June 17th through June 20th, $4,039,933.79. Agenda item 511-22, regular payroll for June 1st through July 14th, 2022, $3,992,573.61. Agenda item 512-22, it's an award of a contract to DTS for ViewWorks Asset Manager software support and hosting in the amount of $70,000. And this is for uh, public utilities. Uh, agenda item 513-22, authorization to purchase and replace live scan equipment in the amount of $116,280. And this is for the uh, police department. Next are agenda items, licenses and permit applications. Uh, so I'm gonna turn that over to uh, uh, our, our uh, Bureau of uh, Alcohol. Good afternoon. Uh, first item 515-22 is an application for a class E liquor license at 221 Ruby Street, JD's Barbecue. Class E license authorizes the sale of alcoholic beverages for consumption on premises in conjunction with food sales at a restaurant. There has been a liquor license at this location with a previous restaurant. The liquor commissioner is recommending approval of this license. Item 516-22 is an application for a Class C liquor license at 1107 West Jefferson Street, Mabohe Filipino Market. A Class C license authorizes the sale of packaged goods for consumption off of the premises. The location is a small Filipino grocery store which seeks to sell Filipino beer along with groceries. The liquor commissioner is recommending approval of this license. Item 517-22 is an application for a Class B liquor license at 1534 Route 59, Frankie's Tap on 59. A Class B license authorizes the services of alcoholic beverages for consumption on the premises. This is a new business seeking to open on Route 59. The applicant is, uh, currently has two other licenses. Uh, the liquor commissioner is recommend, recommending approval of this license. Uh, item 518-22 is an application for a transfer of a Class C liquor license at 1521 Riverboat Center, the Hampton Inn, Joliet I-80. A Class C license authorizes the sale of packaged goods for consumption off of the premises. There's currently a small convenience store which provides single serving containers of beer and wine that uh, patrons who uh, may consume in their rooms. Uh, the applicant is a new owner who is seeking transfer of the existing, the existing license. The liquor commissioner is recommending approval of this transfer. Item 519-22 is an application for a transfer of a Class C <coughs> liquor license at 3555 Mall Loop Drive, Hampton Inn, Joliet I-55. A Class C license authorizes the sale of packaged goods for consumption off of the premises. There's currently a small convenience store here as well, which provides single serving containers of beer and wine that patrons may consume in their rooms. Uh, the applicant is a new owner who is seeking transfer of the existing license. This is the same applicant in the previous item. The liquor commissioner is recommending approval of this transfer. 
final item 520-22 is an application for a class b liquor license at 1399 plainfield road el dorado banquet hall a class b license authorizes the service of alcoholic be beverages for consumption on the premises the applicant is seeking to operate a banquet hall in a portion of the existing building the proposed location is less than 50 feet from the nearest residence at the hearing of the proposed license, five residents appeared in opposition to the license. Three emails in opposition were also received and a petition was presented in opposition which contained 31 signatures of area residents. 13 people spoke in support of the issuance of the license. It should be noted that none were area residents and almost all of them were either relatives or current employees of, of the applicant. There are also 22 licenses within one mile a one mile radius of the proposed location. The liquor commissioner is recommending denial of the application. Um, it should be noted, Mr. Uh, Senior Robles is here. If there are any questions for him as well. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. thank you. Uh, next is ordinance and resolutions. Uh, agenda item 522-22, ordinance establishing a recapture fee for the connection to certain public improvements, uh, specifically Vetter Road. Uh, agenda item 523-22, ordinances associated with Rock Run Crossing, IDI, resubdivision number one. Um, next, agenda item is 524-22, ordinance approving a special use permit to allow an automotive service and repair facility located at 227 Airport Drive. Next agenda item is 525-22, ordinance approving a special use permit to allow truck parking and maintenance facility located at 811 Rowell Avenue. Uh, agenda item 520, Jim, yes sir. On, on the uh, 525, I, I did hear some negative feedback about this from area residents. Um, I don't know if we want to address this tonight or tomorrow, there'll probably be some comments tomorrow, but. Could you maybe give an explanation on this? Sure, I, I believe that there's, uh, I believe the petitioner's here today, if you'd like to make some comments or, or talk about it. Yes, no, 811 round. 811 round. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Uh, Gary Davidson, Castle Law, I'm representing the petitioner. It's the contract purchaser. Uh, the property's currently owned by Gary Schlafler, who operated this as Joliet Disposal. Uh, I think he operated that up until last year, and this was sort of a high volume garbage uh, maintenance facility. They had uh, garbage trucks in and out of this uh, site, as well as the uh, 20 and 40, what do you call them, foot dumpsters? Roll off dumpsters. So the trucks were coming and uh, taking those dumpsters in and out of there. What we're proposing is uh, not a rezoning of the site, uh, but probably uh, a use that's going to be far less intensive. This is going to be a small trucking company that uh, is just going to have trucks that come and park and then they'll maintain those uh, vehicles. So these are over the road trucks. Uh, we have a fleet of I think about 10 or 15 trucks. Most of the time they're going to be out in the field uh, transporting goods. When they need to be serviced only, they're going to come to the site, have the oil changed, have the brakes fixed, and then they'll be, uh, be out back out in the site. We anticipate uh, probably um, one to two trips, uh, trips a day from the trucks. So no reason, no rezoning of this site, just uh, special use. And it just to, I'm trying to answer some of the questions. Um, over the road trucks, these aren't dump trucks or garbage trucks. Are, are they, um, would they be able to drive up and down area roads to get to and from there? So we, um, we included the truck route uh, to get to I-80 in the uh, staff packet um, so all the council members can see the route that they'll be taking, which is a designated truck route. Uh, I believe uh, both uh, both sites adjacent to our uh, parcel are both uh, industrial uses as well. Addition <clears throat> additionally, Mayor, this is uh, contemplates the pilot tax, so it'll be increased revenues for the city as well. Mayor. Yes. Trucks don't always follow the truck routes. They go wherever they can find a quick route to get there. You make all the maps in the world, but they're going to go their own way. Just saying. But thank you for trying to and, do and that. And again, do you have any idea what the usage was before? How many, how many trips a day? If you're saying one or two a day moving forward, what was it? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I spoke to Mr. Schlafler before the meeting. I think there were about uh, 15 to 25 uh, trucks in and out of there a day. 
up until mid last year. End of December. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. So we, we're talking about what a dump truck. I mean, a garbage truck's then. Now we're talking about just the tractor or the tractor and the tr the eighteen wheeler. Or, or what type of trucks are we? This this will be this will be a tractor as well as they'll be pulling a a a, a, the tra a box. The, the box the tractor. Because they'll come for service and those boxes need to be serviced as well. As well. But the prior use was garbage trucks basically and the road the, the trucks that had the the dump thing in. Uh, Correct. Correct. Okay. And then I think I was reading too that there was supposed to be a neighborhood meeting, but then that, that never happened or did it happen? I'm, so we, I spoke to um, the pastor's uh, wife after the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, and I reached out to the pastor. I reached out to the Joliet uh, Township uh, a person who was here, as well as anyone else who I had information for. And I never received a phone call back. So we made attempts to have that meeting and, um, and didn't have that meeting. We did receive feedback um, from the folks who did show up at the meeting. Uh, they had... Uh, made requests that we uh, not operate during the times where they are having a, a church service. I think the church is located maybe about a mile away. Uh, those who spoke at the uh, meeting were, um, there was no one that showed up at the meeting that was located within the notice required under the 500-foot uh, rule. 600-foot. Or 600-foot, excuse me. <laughs> Mayor, question. Yes. Who is the pastor that you speak of? Uh, I think it was Pastor Eugene. Does that sound familiar? No. I don't know yeah. if Eugene That's Fears. Me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's why Pastor Fears. Fears. Yeah. Fears. Mm -hmm. yeah, Pastor Fears. Mm -hmm. I think um, Pastor Fears' wife was who I spoke to at the Planning and Zoning Commission. Your Honor, if I may. Yes. Uh, just to uh, tag in with Councilwoman uh, Quillman. Those trucks are not going to obey any of that. And we're going to have trucks uh, jumping up and down Ryle Avenue, um, which is not a good thing in that particular area. Uh, and since we have not had a meeting uh, with that community out there, I suggest uh, there's something to be done about that uh, because of... Uh, I'm hearing 10 to 15 trucks, and I'm also hearing on the higher end is uh, 20 to 25 trucks uh, per day uh, in that area. And so um, I'd like to see more clarity, more discussion around this special use. Thank you. Are those numbers accurate? Re regarding that, uh Councilwoman Gavin, I think uh, if you're referring to what I was mentioning, uh, that was the prior use uh, by the uh, garbage truck facility. We don't even have that many trucks in our entire fleet for the company that's uh, uh, requesting the special use. So uh, there's no way in uh, a possibility to have that many trips because these are over the road trucks that are coming in. Uh, our, a uh, maximum number of trips per day are going to be one to two per day. One to two trucks per day, and and how many trucks do you have in your fleet? Uh, we have, I think, 15 trucks in the fleet. Mm -hmm. And these are uh, over-the-road trucks that are going from California to Minnesota, New Orleans, New York. Um, so they're not making money when they're sitting uh, in the yard. They're only coming back when they actually need service. They're not being housed there. They're only coming back when they're uh, when service is being required. So this is a this is a use that is going to be uh, much less than the prior use, and it allows uh, someone who's lived in our community uh, and operated a business in this community to be able to sell his business. If you were to sell the business to uh, a similar use, he, that would be uh, automatic. We wouldn't be here before the council as a special use. So if we look at the zoning code. Uh, you're going to find all of the permitted uses within that zoning district. And if you start comparing uh, what uses are already permitted in that versus what is being proposed, this is going to be uh, much better for this particular zoning site than the uses that could go there as of right. Mayor? Yes. <clears throat> 
So if, I'm, if I understand this correctly, this won't be service open to any trucks, just to the trucks owned by the company, what is the company's name? Correct, this is Pro Star Logistics. So they're taking care of their own trucks. Correct. So it is true what a couple of folks said, including Councilman Quillman, oftentimes uh, truckers don't follow the route, but you guys would have the authority to discipline your own employees if they didn't follow the route and, and you caught them at that, am I correct? Correct, and, and obviously we also have uh, weight restrictions on our roads. Just that was like the other do. question I had. How much does a full, uh, the average fully loaded garbage truck weigh? I mean, that's not light either, right? I'd have to um, ask Mr. Schleffer. Would you want to come up and answer that question, Gary? And, and Gary's here with his attorney, uh, Doug Heathcock, with uh, Dunmark and Miller as well. Good afternoon. Yeah, a loaded garbage truck, we, we can carry up to 55,000 pounds. And your, your tractor trailers, may be very well unloaded because they're going for service, right? So you're not going to do that in the middle of a trip, necessarily. No, that's that's our, uh, that's my client, and yes, it's going to be much, uh, much So it, it, the weight's going to be less, and they, they your, your client, the one that would buy it, could discipline their own drivers, am I correct? If they don't follow it, which would answer a legitimate concern from the councilwoman. Um, that's what I have, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, next is agenda item 526-22, and ordinance approving the first amendment to the preliminary agreement with respect to an anticipated water supply agreement between the city of Chicago and the city of Joliet. We were put on a time frame to be able to uh, come up to a, uh, an agreement with the city of Joliet, uh, Chicago. We have an agreement in principle that's been moving forward, but as we work out some of the details uh, to make sure that we are not, uh, that everybody is, uh, being treated equitably, uh, we're being uh, particularly cautious. That's why we're asking for uh, an extension here, a short extension agreed upon by the city of Chicago and ourselves to be able to work out some of these a little bit uh, finer details. So just want to explain that to you. Mayor. Um, yes. Oh, Jim. Um, yeah, and I had a chance to talk to the director. So, you know, certainly I'm supportive of this too because this has, anybody that's watching so they don't get nervous, it's not the pricing structure. It's all the details around the delivery right. itself. The piping it's not the pricing structure we've already had that settled and as the city manager said jim said we just want to make sure that the finer details that don't affect the price but affect other things um we take our time in it so i just wanted to clarify that mayor thank you thank, and thank you councilman um item agenda item 527-22 ordinance director and revisions to the city of joliet utility design and section policy manual uh, Agenda item 529-22, a resolution authorizing uh, approval and execution of an employment agreement between the city manager and the uh, city of Joliet. Agenda item 530-22, and a resolution approving the first amendment to the annexation agreement of 620 Sand Sandall Place, 800 uh, Richard Street, but that's to be tabled uh, by the request of the petitioner. Agenda item 531-22. Yes, sir. Did they give a reason? Uh, uh, or is, is it just a detail thing? They were going to have a neighborhood meeting okay. to be able to meet some of the requirements here that some of the, the folks had, had demanded. The, uh, so they're going to do that. And it was after, it was going to be after this uh, city council day before they could get it done. So thank you. Um, that's, that's what's happening there. Uh, agenda item 531-22, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Township High School District 204 for the School Resource Officer Program. Agenda item 532-22, a resolution designating financial institution to be used as depositories for city funds. And this is a direct result of us having signed that agreement with Culleton. Uh, we are looking at adding um, uh, J.P. Morgan. Uh, to a list of uh, certified uh, folks we can invest money with. Uh, and last, our, our, my, my uh, city manager comments, and just briefly, normally I, I don't say much, but I, I want to give um, the council a heads up very quickly on, on a couple of things actually that concern the police department. One is the um, body cameras we have been getting, uh, and, and, and rightfully so, from police officers, uh, from uh, defense attorneys, is they're, they're asking for, as, as just part of their entire package, every time someone is, is taken into custody or arrested, is that they ask for a copy of the body cam footage. Um, like, unlike in the squad cars where you pull somebody over for a traffic violation, 
very infrequently does somebody ask for the, the, the camera fit footage from that police car for a speeding violation. Um, but in this particular instance, uh, defense attorney would be remiss if he didn't ask for this uh, information. Oftentimes there will be uh, many officers on the scene, so that, that uh, might be anywhere from two officers to six officers to eight officers, and all of those um, uh, have to be redacted and provided to him. Uh, so we only have one person doing this that's not enough, so we're looking at, at, at adding a, a, a couple of folks right now. Uh, it's gotten, uh, because 80% of our, our, a little bit over 80% of the police officers currently have body cameras, we have to have it on, online by uh, January the 1st. So uh, we certainly want people who are defendants to have the, uh, the ability to look at the body cam vid uh, videos in a timely fashion. So uh, I'm gonna be coming to you probably in the next council meeting and asking you for some folks. So I wanna I want give you a heads up because this just came up. Second thing is, uh, and this is disturbing, the uh, Ford Motor Company has canceled all, all of our requests for vehicles. Um, that includes 25 squad cars, uh, various vehicles for various, uh, 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 the water department, et cetera, uh, the fire department. Um, we were hoping to add 25 this year and 25 next year. It looks like as of now, that would be zero, zero. There's not gonna be any price. Uh, they will not guarantee the price. Uh, this is, is uh, a problem for us. Uh, so I, I don't know what that looks like. I'm, I'm scrambling right now to be able to get that, but I wanna let you know that that's gonna cause a problem with the budget because the money that we had initially budgeted to buy these these cars uh, with inflation is is now gone up substantially. Um, so we're I'm working on it. Uh, we just found out about this today, but I wanted to give you, again, a heads up as we walk into the budget area that this is gonna be um, an issue facing, the, not, not, not only our city. Uh, additionally, the Ford Motor Company is looking at taking care of their bigger customers first. And I know that, you know, uh, you think that we need uh, 50 squad cars, uh, that would make us a big customer. But I believe, uh, like, you know, for instance, the Illinois State Police order 200 cars a year. So you can see that we're up against, uh, we're, we're trying to fight for what we can get. So like I said, I'm, I'm making some phone calls, I'm tapping into some networks to see what we can do to be able to get squad cars for us and what that's gonna look like. So I just wanna give you a heads up on that and let you know what's going on. Uh, before the budget gets here. Again, we just found that out today. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. But that, those conclude my remarks. And just uh, as an internal matter, obviously I've been outspoken about the gas tax that was raised. <clears throat> if we're not spending the money through, through no fault of, of your own, right. that I, shouldn't just be directed into the general fund. Well, we're, we're going to have to spend that money. Actually, we're going to have to spend more money to get these cars, actually. Well, when we get them, we're not spending it now. So what's going to happen well, with the excess money that we well, have? Well, we'll... we'll it's already been earmarked to buy these cars. That's it's, we're going to have to add to that amount. It's not like we're just getting to keep it and spend it on something but else. But we're not spending it today. So right. what's going to happen to that money between now and when we can we'll buy? We'll earn interest until such time we can okay. buy the car. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to roll in the general fund. Oh no, we're not. No, no, no. It's it's, it's already earmarked. Uh, that's to be spent so right it's not just there for us to use on something else no but, that, that money's set aside for for the squad cars and i'm afraid i'm going to have to come back to the council to ask for additional funds uh to add to that which is you know disturbing so um that's that's those are my comments next are public comments is there anyone that would like to speak under public comments this evening Yes. Hi, Mary Beth Gannon, Keegan, Western Avenue. Uh, this afternoon, middle of the day, here I am living in what I thought was one of the nicest parts of town. And my car was stolen out of my driveway. Um, I'm stunned. The amount of crime seems to be up in Kappa, the cathedral area, and I've approached some Kappa members in the past about maybe trying to do neighborhood watch. And I was told to keep in the past to keep my mouth shut because it will give the neighborhood a bad look. But you know, when your car is gone, it, it feels, I feel very violated, you know, and for it to happen in the middle of the day in our neighborhood, I think it's disgraceful. There's been a lot of crime there. And I don't know if the police can just do neighborhood watch if, we could invite somebody or a group of us can host it on our own because I feel like 
Capitol is all about parties and having house walks when it should also be about neighborhood safety. And um, I, I don't know what I want. I, I'm in shock here. So I, I guess I would like to know if there's anything we can do to con increase patrols in our neighborhood and you know not sweep the matter under the rug. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Good evening, John Harlow and with Nelson Rollos. <clears throat> wanted to uh, have a few comments about the um, earlier report on the liquor license application to 1399 Plainfield. Um, we have some visuals here, if you give me a second. Um, these are the same ones we used. Uh, when we made our license application is for um, a license, uh, class B located in a part of the existing building at 1399. My client acquired not only that parcel, um, you may be familiar, it has a boost uh, mobile. Um, <clears throat> it is, as you're facing the parcel uh, on Plainfield Road, it's to the right of the BP station. Um, that parcel has an existing building with the boost mobile and an existing, essentially a banquet hall of about 3,000 square feet. Our application is for a liquor license, a class B liquor license there uh, for the purpose of operating a banquet hall. Um, <clears throat> capacity, approximately 100 people. Um, our operation will be for Friday nights, Saturday nights, and Sunday nights only. We will be operating from 5 to 11. Um, and the, <clears throat> this application, uh, if granted, allow us to operate the banquet hall and in conjunction with the banquet hall as well as the boost mobile will be the financing mechanism the financing arm for an entire redevelopment of the three parcels not just that parcel but the two additional parcels between it and the boost mobile um, if anyone's familiar there there in the middle parcel there's a a residential house that looks completely out of place and then there are several other buildings to the parcel immediately adjacent to the bp there's a, a vacant building there, long red building you can see as you drive by. And then behind it, there's a uh, auto body repair place, um, which faces the neighborhood. Um, part of the redevelopment will be the removal of the residence, the red building, as well as the um, body shop operation. Not only will that building be gone, but the whole body shop operation will no longer exist at that parcel. We intend to build what we've shown here. Um, what this... Um, parcel will look like then will be four retail spots in a single building. Mayor, um, we can't see this over here. I'm sorry. All facing um, toward Plainfield. Just, you put come it forward with that. Why don't you put it in front of me? This um, application will allow us to uh, operate the banquet hall um, and in conjunction with the Boost Mobile will provide essentially financing for the construction of an entirely new um, development on the property which will remove several eyesores, remove a operation which we believe is causing considerable consternation to the neighbors immediately behind them and that's the body shop operation. That body shop operation has tow trucks dropping off cars to be worked on sometimes as late as 2 in the morning. Um, that will be completely eliminated from the parcel. These buildings, if built, will all be facing on the plain field. The operation will all be facing forward and away from the residential area. It will also um, increase the parking. The operation of the retail um, stores we anticipate will be during the day time hours. And so the banquet hall will be operating, as I said earlier, from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, nosy, in the evening. Um, the banquet hall will be for private parties only. It will be by invitation only. We have uh, two air, um, ent entrances to the uh, hall, one on the side, one on the front. <clears throat> During these uh, parties, they will be manned by security guards at both locations, which will restrict the entry to only to invited guests. Um, food will be provided in, in the banquet hall. That's part of the operation, along with the liquor license. So 
with this, um, if the liquor license is granted and allows us to open this banquet hall and continue to operate, it will finance what will be somewhere in the neighborhood of a full $2 million worth of redevelopment for the construction of the building, the repaving uh, re, uh, and reconfiguration of the entire site, all three parcels, and will provide a significant upgrade from our view uh, to what's existing there now. Um, and be a significant economic investment in, in the city of Joliet. Mr. Robles operates, as many of you may know, um, a, a similar sort of retail operation, Strip Center along Collins Avenue. He's also just recently been granted by the commission a liquor license with a partner for a banquet hall operation over on Jefferson. So we, we wanted to provide a little bit of context on this um, to, to let the council know that really this operation is, is going to be unlike uh, many of the other liquor operations. There is no retail. There is no, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's not open to the public. It'll be open um, only to those uh, invited guests of the particular uh, person who's throwing the party at the time. Um, if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Uh, and I have Mr. Robles here. Yeah, I think the only question I have, and obviously, Mr. Robles, you've been part of this community for a long time. The, the people directly behind your facility have been very outspoken a year ago and continue today. Have you shared these plans or your vision with them? Any type of neighborhood meeting or sat down to discuss what, you, what you're looking to do in the property long term? Thank you, sir. Um, no, we haven't been able to talk to them since I have an incident with one of the neighbors who tried to attack me. And I also, in that moment, I went to the police department. I, I uh, request a restriction order and that keep us apart and since then we haven't been able to talk to them because this gentleman he really want to attack me so that's why i didn't share this uh, project with them okay it's one gentleman who also appeared at, at the commission hearing uh, where we made a presentation um previously you may recall um and when i got involved more than a year ago um there were some issues with the fence that, that between the commercial property and the residences um, I was originally consulted um, about what we could do with that. Those fences, we actually looked at surveys and everything. Fences didn't belong to us. Uh, they belonged to the residential unit owners. We, um, at that point, I, I discussed it with Nelson and, and we talked about whether we could come to some agreement and, and perhaps assist in fixing those fences, wh whether we were legally obligated or not, to sort of provide some goodwill and, and sort of indicate that going forward, we understood that there was, needed to be some barrier between the activity on the commercially zoned property and, and the residences, um, so there there was there were op there was opposition. It was, in my understanding, mostly the opposition from the last time, and um, I think the, the the proposed operation of the banquet hall will be different this time. We will have security at each door. Um, we will be operating only on several days a week. We will be operating with a, in a combined time period, and. The fences are now fixed. Uh, the residents have gotten together and fixed those fences. We will also um, do whatever the um, city requires of any commercial development in terms of additional barriers, et cetera. We had a discussion at the hearing about um, damage to the fence that was allegedly caused by some of the operations on the commercial um, operation before. And we assured everyone that if that did in fact happen, like any other commercial property owner, we have insurance. We, of course, be responsible for any damage caused by us, and we would take care of those things. Um, again, we do believe it's a significant upgrade to that parcel vis-a-vis -vis the res residential owners because we're going to be removing that body shop operation completely. Um, and just to correct the presentation you heard earlier, there was someone um, who appeared in support of this proposal, and it was a property owner immediately across the street the gentleman appeared at the hearing. He lives right across the street from this, um, this uh, parcel. And he said he was in support. And what he said to the commission essentially was, look, I think he should be given an opportunity to operate this thing. And if he doesn't operate it correctly, you, the commission, have every right to, to come back and, and discipline him, revoke the license or whatever. But he said, I think he should have an a, a, a opportunity to operate this banquet hall. And again, we're next to a 24-hour uh, BP operation. Um, and this was a commercially zoned parcel before we even purchased any of these parcels. This is a commercially zoned parcel on a major arterial that these residences back up to. I think the proposal is a significant upgrade. I think it's a significant investment um, by a, business, a Joliet businessman in this parcel, and I think it fits in that area. 
in terms of the operation we're proposing. So we'd uh, ask that you uh, favorably consider it when you do. And if there's any other questions, we'd be happy to answer. Mayor, may I ask one yes. um, you, You're saying that you will eliminate the auto body repair shop. Well, do you currently own it? No, we rent it. We own the part. We own the parcel. We own the, we own the, the property, but we rent to. Someone I see else. you rent to someone. Okay. And we've advised them they are now in a month-to-month -month lease. So okay. as soon as this, as soon as this project is moving forward, um, we'll give them notice and they'll be gone. Okay. Thank you. Question there: If this license were to pass, what would take place at the banquet hall in the meantime until this facility is built? We continue to have your banquets. But we haven't had any. We, we haven't had any banquets at that operation for several years. But we were, my question is, if that's passed until this is built, what would happen there now? Um, in the meantime, at the banquet hall or at yes. the rest of the parcel? At the banquet hall. The mm -hmm. banquet hall that's now there. Please answer my question, okay? If this liquor license is passed mm -hmm. until this other part is built. Would you continue to have your parties at the current banquet hall? Yes. Okay. Part of part of. The and you've had no meetings with the neighborhood around there. Not recently. Well, I suggest this is my suggestion. I can't speak for the council, but I would like to see the neighborhood meeting. And you have this proposal, and you talk to all the neighbors that live around there because I get a lot of phone calls complaining about that banquet hall all the time. They never complain about the auto body shop. They complain about the banquet hall. So that would be my hope. I would I would ask that you have a neighborhood meeting and maybe we could table this tomorrow. Thank you. Anyone else? I've got one question. Yes. I was trying to see what would the parking be now and with the new after you do the new development. Would it be in the front or uh, it's going to be in the front and also in the back in the back side because not much parking. Layout yeah. right. so parking map here. Um, I, I, there would be most of the crop, uh, parking would be in front, there would be some parking yeah. in the back. And there would be between the banquet hall and the new building, there would be a, approximately a two lane sort of driveway. Okay, so some of the parking would be in the back it would. where the neighbors? It would. Oh, okay, thank you. How many total parking spaces do you have? I think it's 48. 53. 53. I believe it's 53. And how many people is this new banquet hall going to hold? 100 people. 100 people. <clears throat> None of the retail uses will be open at the same time as the banquet hall, so yeah. uh, the parking won't need to overlap at that point. Anything else? Thank you. You know, I can't hear any of the conversation. Is the mic turned off? Nope, it's on. No, it's on. This one's on. I can not hear them talking at all. Is there anyone else that would like to speak under public comments? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. The motion seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We adjourn. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.